Welcome to Wisdom Church of Manila, recorded live. Hello, um, my name is Tanya Navarro. I'm here to share my testimony. Um, it was in the year 2021 that Baby Faith, my baby girl, f first appeared in our vision board. We would declare her and imagine her with us. In August 14, 2022, I learned that I was pregnant. In September, I had a miscarriage. I remember having the most difficult time. The Lord, by His grace, gave me enough strength and His word to rely on His love through Romans 8. It was then that I held on to Psalm 22, verses 30 to 31, saying, Babies not yet born will get to know that God does just what He says. I was even led to make an advanced video testimony declaring how the Lord has been faithful to His promises for the year 2022 as if I was sharing it in a large crowd. I would watch that video from time to time. In November 14, 2022, I learned that I was pregnant again. We, we celebrated with our whole family. I remember breaking the news to Ministry of Helps. A lot were shocked for they did not know that I lost the first one and that it didn't show in my face that I had a miscarriage and grief. In June 19, 2023, Tadius and I woke up one morning with my, with my usual routine. I would get my Doppler to hear her heartbeat, but this time, I could not find her heartbeat. We rushed to have an ultrasound, and the sonologist said that there was no movement and no heartbeat detected. We did not take her report, and we still believed that God would do a miracle. That day, sad to say, I delivered to a dead baby. It was so painful and heartbreaking. I remember that I wasn't able to think straight. Pero alam na alam ko na wala na akong paghuhugutan ng lakas kung hindi si God lang. Every day, I would seek Him and His Word. He never failed to comfort me in His Word. I remember grabbing a note from my old journal when God said, Yes, I will stay with you, Tanya. I will stick with you until I have done everything I promised you. And I took that. It was a roller coaster of emotions. Naalala ko, nag, nagagalit na ako sa soul ko. Kasi maya-maya iiyak siya. Tapos maya-maya okay na uli siya. Sabi ko, Teka, kailan kaya matatapos tong pagdadalamhati? Pati kasi yung mama ko nahihirapan na kasi natatakot silang maloka ko. It was then that I had come face to face with my soul and ask help from Ate Spirit. Remember, we are body, soul, and spirit. Ate Spirit, who is the mature one, the one who is connected to the Holy Spirit, consoled the soul part of me. Ate Spirit spoke these words to soul. It's in Hebrews 12, 7. Yeah. As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So, Tanya, we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and sin we so easily fall into, this grief and soulish cry. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination, for the path has been already marked out before us. We looked away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, because Jesus' heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be His, He endured the agony of the cross and it conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. I just allowed the Spirit my spirit to speak truth over soul and make it reverberate in her very heart to let go of anything that weighs her down and to focus on Jesus. I remember Ate Spirit would even sing this song over her. Oh my soul, do you not know? Have you not heard? It's been told from the beginning. The Lord your God is on your side. Oh my soul, don't be afraid. Hope in the Lord. By his righteousness and power, he will strengthen, he will guide. And I will soar on wings like eagles, held by the hand of God. I will run and not grow tired when on his name I call. 
For the Lord is never weary. His ways are beyond our thoughts. I will trust in him with all my heart. And I will rest upon his promise. Patiently I wait. I just allowed Ate Spirit to sing over her hanggang sa mabingi na si Soul that this is their absolute truth. One time, I was taking a bath and this time I talked to body. Sabi ko, body, sorry ha, kasi hindi natin siya nailabas ng buhay. I'm sorry for blaming you and for getting angry at you. Hanggang ngayon, hindi mo pa alam na wala na si baby, gumagawa ka pa ng milk. I imagine her being appeased and received that and, he, and she received that forgiveness. Then I spoke healing over her, declaring that by the stripes of Jesus, she is already healed. Yung operation site na, it's already healed. I declare that she will be strengthened and that one day she will have baby faith again and she will be finally with us. So that made body, soul, and spirit integrated into one. And we prayed Ephesians 1, 17 to 20. Sabi ko, I ask for the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to align the spirit, soul, and body and make them see things they need to see until all they see is their hope in God and their calling and the glorious inheritance. I ask the same power of the Holy Spirit that released Jesus from the dead to make all the dead parts in her to come alive. It was then that Tanya has received all the blessings he, God has for her. The first one was the Father's love. Um, uh, one time I was asking, sabi ko, Lord, does anyone know how deep this pain of losing my baby could be? Alam kaya nila? And then I recalled in my spirit uh, the song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Diba in that song, sabi, How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away. With that song, I was reminded that God the Father himself has experienced losing her own son. And it comforted me to know that he too knew how hard it is to lose your love. Especially the thought that the triune God willingly gave Jesus for me, for us, that we may receive, that I may have received his love fully. Secondly, I also received the Holy Spirit feeding me with his truth in his word every day. Third, I received the spirit of joy. Um, I... Alam nyo, habang nasa grocery ako, I found myself, I will sing, I've got the joy down in my heart to stay. <laughs> Sabi nga ni Jerry Savel, di ba? If Satan cannot steal your joy, he cannot keep your goods. I can't believe, friends, na wala pang, oh, isang buwan na, isang buwan, isang buwan na mula nang nawala si Faith, pero nakakatawa na uli ako. It's all because of Jesus. Nakakatayo ako sa harap ninyo ngayon. Punong-puno ng joy and confidence kasi nakita ko na. Mm -hmm. Nakita ko na eh. One day, my baby will be with me. She will also be with us. And no one can take that vision away from me. Yeah. Tapos ano, in a moment-to-moment -moment basis, di ba, the enemy will not stop. He will, make sit he will bring out situations to dictate how you should feel. And I had become aware that the enemy is always after the airtime in my mind. And every time, any, every airtime in my mind that, that I give to the enemy is an airtime I lose of holding on to God's promises, of holding on to Him. So I made a decision not to let myself dwell on the past, but fill myself with hope to choose life, to come up higher, to see things from His perspective, to be in tune to His frequency, to pre-play what He showed me in the secret place, to speak and sing about what is written in my books hanggang sa wala nang lugar yung enemy sa akin. Yeah. Friends, the Word, Jesus Himself, became human and made His home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. I pray, church, that the God, the fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with His superabundance until you radiate with hope. Thank you for listening. Wow.
Yeah, what an amazing testimony. Hello, uh, can everyone hear me properly? Um, if you don't know me, my name is Raymond Nicholas. I am uh, the son of my pastor, my, my parents who are the pastors of this church. <laughs> my and yes, so, um, hello. So I'm here to do the introduction. And so welcome to Wisdom Church of Manila, where our church provides solutions, answers, ideas, and strategies from the uncompromised word of God so that you are equipped and empowered to live an abundant life. Because we teach the uncompromised word of God, the supernatural and miracles happen. Miracles and healing, financial breakthroughs, and relationships restored. As you come to church and listen to this word every Sunday, sooner or later, a year, two years from now, three years from now, your relationships are better, your health is better, and finances are better in every area of your life. This is what our church is about, and this is Wisdom Church of Manila, experiencing God's abundant life. Now I would want to introduce my father, Pastor Rosaldi Nicholas. Wow, give my son a round of applause. Welcome. So, uh, who is glad to be here this afternoon? Wow. So, we're going to start with our tithes and offering. Who's glad we're starting with our tithes and offering? Wow. That's amazing. Anyway, um, I'm going to start with the tithes and offering, and then I'm going to introduce my spouse, my wife, uh, Pastor Celeste, for the main preaching. Uh, we always start with the first verse, which is actually the base, uh, one of the base scriptures of tithes and offering. Can we get the slides, please? It says in Hosea 4, 6, Tech. We apologize for the delayed tech. You're making me feel uncomfortable in front of everybody, tech. <laughs> Wait. What? Oh, we have a technical problem. Memorize ko naman eh. Actually, I have it all in my notes, so I don't need to memorize it. Ah, there we go. We always start with Hosea 4.6. This, this is so key. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. knowledge. It did not say for the lack of money. It did not say for a lack of a spouse. It did not say for the lack of a church. It did not say for the lack of anything else. It's for the lack of knowledge. And you know what? One thing that caught my attention, he says, it did not say the world is destroyed. He said, it's who's destroyed? Yes, God's people. Interesting, right? This is not to the world. He says, my people, that's you and me. Is this the first time you saw that? Like, it's you and me. Christians, you and me, are barely making it in some areas of our life because of lack of knowledge. Before you can win any battle, you will have to deal with the enemy. As Tanya said earlier, the enemy plants thoughts, right? You have to deal with the enemy in this arena of ignorance. Say, ignorante ako. No, I canceled that in Jesus' name. Ignorance. Right? The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. Next verse. This is John 10, 10, which is one. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The enemy comes to steal. Steal what? Your finances, your money. He came to kill. Kill what? Kill your body. Came to destroy, destroy what? Destroy your relationships, the top three areas of life. We have problems in our life. It's in our finances, it's in our body, and it's in our relationships, right? Anything else? If you have problems? It's usually those three areas, right? Right, church? Yes. But first and foremost, what does the enemy try to steal? Yes, Brian, you're so good. The, the enemy is after the word. The word of God. Say, the enemy, the enemy is after the word. 
Okay. When I say the word, it means the word of God. When you say the word, it means Jesus because Jesus became flesh. He is the word in flesh, right? If you don't understand what the enemy is after, then you won't recognize it when he attacks. He's after the word. Do you want to know the, one of the main ways that the enemy steals the word? Who wants to know that? Two people. Who wants to know how the enemy steals the word? So, uh, how? Anybody wants to know? How? Oh. Pressure. You're all good until something happens, then you're under pressure, right? In terms of money, it's financial pressure. For example, do you really believe that, give, that God gives you the power to become rich? This is actually one of my preachings. Next verse. This is the word of God. Deuteronomy 8.18. Remember, it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to become rich. That's the word of God. And do you really believe that God takes pleasure in your prosperity? The word says, next verse, in Psalm 35, 27, let the Lord be magnified, for he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. This is the word that the enemy tries to steal. Do you really believe that his plan is to prosper you? Everybody knows this verse, right? Next verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. This is the word that the enemy tries to steal. You say, I believe, I believe, right? Say, I believe. I believe. And then, bam! Wala, ginigising ko lang ang church. You're awake now, right? Bam! You lose your job. Your business goes, business goes under. You get sick and all the hospital bills piles up. Pressure pulls on, right? Can, you, has, can anyone relate on this? Pressure. Your car breaks down. You have no money for the rent. Miralco cuts off your electricity and to top it all off, my dog ran away. <laughs> oh. And when you are in this financial pressure, what, guess what? You don't tithe. I don't have money, I don't tithe. You don't give when you're led by the Holy Spirit. You don't sow seeds of offering. Does this sound familiar? For example, what else does the word say? Let's go to the word. Next verse, Leviticus. It says, and all the tithe, some of the tithe, all of the land, whether of the seed of the land, of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy. The word says that all the tithe belongs to the Lord. And if God considers it holy, then maybe you and I should consider it holy as well. What else does the word say? Next verse. You like how I revised the, the, the because usually that's the second verse, right? Malachi 3, the word says, Well, a man robbed or defraud God, yet you robbed and defraud me. But you say, In what way do we rob and defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and offering. And then the word says, What does the word say if you withhold your tithe? There's a consequence. Next verse, right, right after this, it says, You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me. This is whose life verse is this? Does it sound condemning? Like, I don't like that verse. Therefore, it's not part of the word. No, it's in the word. The word says that if you are not tithing, you are under a curse, whether you like it or not. Now, let me say it another way. If you withhold the tithe, you have placed yourself in a financial curse. Why? Because the, uh, when you tithe, you open the floodgates of heaven. This is your umbrella. And when you don't tithe, you go outside of the umbrella, and then basically you give permission to the enemy. I know it's like the same thing over and over again, right? The tithe is serious. The word also says, let's go to the next verse. You shall surely tithe all the yield of your seed produced by your field each year. And then in this verse, a few verses later, 
write down about uh, six verses later or seven verses later, what happens when you tithe? It says, the Levite and the stranger and temporary resident and the fathers and the widow who are, this is connected, by the way, who are in your town shall come and eat and be sad so that the Lord your God may bless you and all the work of the hands of what you do. Everybody loves the blessing. Everybody loves that the Lord bless the work of your hands. But if you go six verses up, the condition is the tithe. Notice that the obedience came before the reward. Tithing is the blessing exchange. This is one of the eight foundations. If you do your part by bringing the holy tithe to him, God is faithful to do his part to bless all the work of your hands. Do you agree? Well, I thought so too until my son Anthony was editing our videos last week and he asked me a question about this preaching. Anthony, can you come up here a bit? <laughs> Give my son a round of applause. So what was your, because so, uh, we were eating dinner and then he said, he asked me a question about what I preached last week, because these are exactly what I said last week. What was your question? My question was, everyone can hear me? Okay. Listen my question was, because you, you, when you read those verses, right, and you listen to the context, it's like, you tithe, then God blesses, right? That's what it sounds like. That's, that's what it sounds like. And in the Old Testament, that's true. But my question was, but isn't it different in the New Testament? Isn't it that God already blessed us, and therefore we tithe. How come tithing is different compared to other things? Like, hasn't Jesus already given us everything? Like healing. Let's start with healing, right? Didn't Jesus always give us healing? Yes. 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 <laughs> and then basically, your, your, the, your part is to be able to, to know what to do, knowledge again, in order to receive the healing. In this case, what do you do in order to receive this blessing? Let's say financial blessing since we're talking about this part. I believe it's tithing. It's tithing. <laughs> so it is an exchange. It's an exchange, but when you think about it, when you tithe, that's not when God gives you provision. He already gave you provision, that therefore you tithe. And I remember I personally dealt with this um, ideology a long time ago where I was sitting down and I was praying to the Lord, Lord, I know you've already given healing to me. That, that's why I confess and that's why I speak to my body to be healed. But how come with tithing, it feels like it's different or with provision, it's different. And then the Lord told me, he said that I have already blessed you. That's why you tithe and that's why you give back to me. It's not the other way around. Because when you turn things around and you say, I need to give my tithe so that God opens the windows of heaven for me, it becomes legalistic. legalistic. It becomes obedience-based. It becomes based on your performance. Although, I must say, there's a caveat to that. If you choose not to tithe, I believe that you are, I think it's the, the, the general and most efficient or I guess straightforward way for us to move in faith and obedience with the Lord. Kind of like when it comes to healing, the most effective way I believe is praying over our body. But sometimes the Lord will tell you and give you a different nudge, like do this instead. And I believe also when it comes to provision, sometimes the Lord will nudge you, hey, you know, of course tithing, but hey, I'm gonna nudge you and I want you to speak to this person because there's an opportunity there that I have for you. Okay, so I just, I wanted to clarify. Does that, that make sense, church? <laughs> Does everyone agree? Wow. <laughs> okay, okay. What's wisdom? He must it must come from your father. <laughs> Our father in heaven. Our <laughs> Can you give my son a round of applause? I totally agree. That makes so much sense, right? Faith. You gotta put action behind your faith. Tithing and hearing from the Lord and the Holy Spirit when you give offering is the action because of faith. Does this make sense so far, church? Okay, let's go back to the Word. The Word also says, let's go New, Test New Testament now, 2 Corinthians 9, which is actually about the offering. This entire chapter is about the offering. It says, and God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your 
righteousness. God gives seed to the? Does God give seed to every Christian? According to this, only to sow. And not to the one that eats the seed. There's a difference, you know. Seed, sow. Bread, eat. How do you know the difference? You ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, is this money for seed or is this money for my provision for my family? That's it. Don't mix the two up. God is in the seed-giving business, and we determine our harvest, right, by the amount of seed we sow. It says in Genesis, actually. Can you go to the next verse? It says, while the earth remains, seed time, this is the word again, and harvest, cold and heat, summer, winter, and day and night, shall not cease. Say, God said it. Say, I believe it. And that settles it. The word of God addresses every area of our life, including finances, by the way. Again, can we go back to our first verse? God's people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Christians are barely making it because of the lack of knowledge. And this is what we provide in our church. You know, say this after me. I will not let the enemy steal the word. Don't let the enemy steal this. I know some of you don't like it, the, you know, any teaching on the tithe and offering, but this is just us planting seed in your heart. And it's the Holy Spirit who's actually going to give you the revelation on this subject. If we're going to succeed in any area of life, it's up to us. We overcome with the word of God. And we only become overcomers if we determine daily, daily, to get into the word, to meditate on his word, and let the Holy speak and give you his revelations. Do you receive this message, church? Yes. Great. Does everybody have a pen and envelope? Who does not have a pen and envelope? Please raise your hand, ushers. Can you please pass pens and envelope? Again, as usual, for the third week in a row, I am going to remind you, if you take a pen from Wisdom Church, please drop it back in the basket. <laughs> Pastor Celeste keeps on reminding me because we are running out of pens faster. And so where are the pens going? That was a joke. This church needs to relax. By the way, if this is your church, please write your name on the envelope. This is how we keep track who is part of our church and the tithe come to this church. Now, if you are a visitor, you're welcome to stay, have a Bible study with us, but the tithe should go to your church. It's the church feeds the word, okay? Now, when it comes to the offering, that's a different story. The offering is directed by the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit leads you to give an offering to our church because you are fed the word, then your job is to obey exactly in the kingdom the kingdom of god there are four steps to receive your harvest first you have to determine the harvest what is it what is this harvest what is the desire that the holy spirit has placed in your heart is it a new job is it salvation for a loved one is it healing is it a promotion? Whatever it is, please write it down. Do not leave it blank. The very first step of actually taking from the spirit to the natural realm is taking an idea or a leading by the Holy Spirit and writing it down. You must identify the harvest. You cannot leave it blank. By the way, if you're also looking for prayers, and if it's urgent, after service today, please come down and let our uh, prayer team pray for you and come to an agreement with you. The second step, pray and listen to the Holy Spirit. Ask God right now, ask the Holy Spirit, what is the right measure of seed for the harvest that you are asking for? 
the harvest that you're expecting, the harvest that you're claiming that you got it right now. It's really between you and God. It will never come from me. It will never come from Pastor Celeste. It is a direct instruction from the Holy Spirit. Listen. Take your hand and ask God in your spirit, what is the right measure of seed for this harvest, Lord? Be careful right now and don't let the enemy steal this word and steal the instruction from the Holy Spirit. It's specific. It's the right measure. If you're asking for apples, the Holy Spirit will never lead you to plant orange seeds. Number three, easy. Obey the Holy Spirit. The quickest path to your breakthrough is swift, radical obedience. Is everybody ready? In our church, we claim this. We declare the word of God. We declare, let's declare these words right now uh, as a church. These are all Bible verses, and we're returning back his word back to God. Can everybody raise their envelopes? Uh, and let's speak these words together. Father, I choose to have faith and believe your word. You said if I keep the tithe, I am robbing you. I will never rob you another day of my life and expect you to bless me. So today I bring the tithe of the income that you gave me and I plant my seed offering as a form of worship. And you said that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing I do not have room enough to contain. So Lord, I ask you now to water my seed and I bring back to me harvest 30, 60, 100 fold. As I believe, so shall I receive. Today, Lord, I am a child of faith. I believe that I receive when I pray and I seal it with praise and thanksgiving. And if you believe this, shout amen. 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 Ushers, can you pass the baskets, please? As you can see, this declaration is just all Bible verses. This is the Word of God. When you lay down your tithes and offering, don't just throw it. This tithe is holy. You say, you know, like, thank you, Lord, for blessing the work of my hands. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to produce wealth. Thank you, Lord, that I receive this harvest now in Jesus' name. Go, holy angels. This is releasing your angels. Go, holy angels, the reapers, and bring in the harvest now in Jesus' name. Does this make sense? Are you excited for today's preaching? Yes. It's the second part of our series. It's a six-part series. On faith that brings victory. Woohoo! Can everybody extend their hands, please, as I lay my hands on our tithes and offering as a church? Lord God, you said in your word, in Matthew 18, verse 19, again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Lord God, as I touch your holy tithe and the offerings of our church, I, I pray that you are glorified. You are glorified and you are, that we honor you, Lord. And we, we are doers of our word and not just hearers of word right now. So right now, we claim right now the 30, the 60, the 100-fold return of all the seeds that we planted today and in the past, Lord. Go, holy angels, our church angels right now. Go out right now and reap the harvest now in the name of Jesus. This is our declaration. This is our agreement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody, can you give a round of applause as I welcome my lovely wife, Pastor Celeste. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Wow. Are you excited for today's message? Yes. 
I want to see smiles. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you know what? Before I start, let me just do a quick announcement. And let me show you this quick video about our marriage amplified. Roll it, please. Definitely, this ito yung isa sa pinaka kaaabangan na event. Iba yung power that can be released. Marami pa kaming kailangan matatungan. Kasi alam namin, marami pa rin kaming hindi alam. Mas mas strength and further yung bond namin as a couple. Bond then directly with Christ since we are considered as one na. It's very important to really understand how marriage works. So, opportunity talaga siya to receive new revelations about marriage. So, how much more it will keep on continuing listening, learning? Yun, yung pisay niya ng hindi mapapayaran ng kahit anong amount, hindi mapapalitan ng kahit anong experience. Lord, na lahat ng bata ay mabalik sa Panginoon. Uh, yeah, and if we want to invite you and encourage you to attend the event. This is so worth it. Like, we invite you to attend the Marriage Amplified Conference this coming July 30. That's from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. I come in agreement with you. Listen, that's already next Sunday. Say 1 p.m. July 30. So that's next week. And listen, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. is our service. So that's, yes, optional, right? But I would like to encourage you to attend the service. 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And then 2.30, we will start the marriage conference. We will start 2.30 until 5.30 for the first session. 5.30 until 6.30, we have dinner break. And then 6.30 until 8 is our session two, right? So it's going to be a full pack. But if you are married five years, one year, newly married, 10 years, you are definitely welcome to come and you will definitely learn more, right, about marriage. And also, if you are getting ready to get married, woohoo, marami jan. Come on, right? If you are getting ready to get married, this is also for you. Definitely for you, right? It will equip you, empower you to design your marriage God's way. God's way. So, um, okay. You got the schedule there, right? Did we show that schedule? Anyway, so, okay. Well, let's continue our series, Faith That Brings Victory. So today we are going to be talking about week two. Can we show that slide that's showing all the weeks? Let me just tell you the topics per week. So this is a six-week series, right? And if you can show the slide that shows, so week one we discussed last week, God's plan for your victory. So that was last week. If you missed that, I would highly encourage you to please watch that, right? Now, today, we're going to be talking about week two, moving into the spiritual realm. Week three is, there we go, living in the realm of victory. Week four is exercising your faith muscle. Week five is when does faith arrive? And week six, keep the switch of faith turned on. That is just so good. I mean, you know what? Listen, I hope last week I have established the importance of having faith. And not just having faith, but exercising and activating and stirring up your faith. Right? Faith is already inside of you. But you got to activate that. You got to exercise that. You got to stir up that faith inside of you so that it starts working. So last week we talked about two realms. Right, the spiritual realm and the physical realm. And these two realms overlap, right? When we talk about the spiritual realm, it's not somewhere up there in heaven in, that you can't see. Well, you can't see, but it's not far from you. It is here as well, right? And these two realms overlap. And we talked about that last time. Can we show the first slide? Um, my first slide, and let me just give you some 
a verbiage, right? The words that we use to describe the realms. For spiritual realm, we talked about the supernatural realm. It's the same thing. We say it's invisible realm. We use the word unseen realm. We use the words heavenly realm. It's the same thing, right? Okay, we're there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. I'll put this water here. Okay, and then when we talk about the physical realm, we also call it what? The natural realm, the visible realm, the seen realm, or the world. The world around us is our physical realm. So these are the two realms. Yes, we call them different names, but it's still the same, two realms, right? I hope that's established right there. Now, the second one is we also need, we, this is last week also, we established that God had already given us everything. Right? Everything that you need now and everything that you will be needing in the future, God had already given. Let's look up Ephesians 1 3. Ephesians 1 3 says that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's my pointer. There we go. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So, in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly places, in the invisible realm, all the blessings were already given. All the blessings that you need now and all the blessings that you will be needing in the future were already given to you. So you don't pray and ask and beg God, Lord, give me, give me, give me, right? Give me your healing, Lord. Give me your provision, Lord. Give me your grace, Lord, because all of these things have already been given to you. They are in the heavenly realms. They're in the invisible realm, but it's already there, right? It's already there. You have his word. You have the Bible, right? You have his healing. You have his restoration. You have his protection. You have provision. We talked about that. Provision, right? It's already been given. You have his blessings. You have eternal life. You have the forgiveness of your sins. Past, present, and future. It's already been given to you. Right? You have Jesus inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have the faith of God, the faith of Jesus. Right? You have been given the grace. You have been given the glory, the honor of God. You have the kingdom of God inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit, the power living inside of you. You guys are loaded. Everybody say, I'm loaded. Dame, right? You have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You have the fruits of the Holy Spirit inside of you working in your life. You have the blood of Jesus. You have the name of Jesus. You have the power and the authority to trample and serpents and scorpions. You have those things inside of you. You have a better covenant than, with better promises than the Old Testament people. You have all of those things. And church, this is what you call God's grace. Can we, can we show that slide real quick? The things that I have mentioned is what I call, what we call grace. Right? This is God's grace, and they're all in the spirit realm, right? In the spiritual, in the supernatural, in the heavenly, in the invisible. They're there, and it's again been given to you. Right? Everybody say it's done. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Also, I want to highlight this as well. You know, we talked about solutions, ideas, and strategies from the Lord, right? Specific instructions from God. You know, we, we talked about that, especially in the beginning. And where are these instructions? They are in the spiritual realm. They are there in the spiritual realm. And how do you bring these, all of these things, from the spiritual realm to the physical. Can we show the next slide, please? The next slide, yes. There. You bring all of these things that are available in the spirit realm, in the heavenly places, in the invisible, through faith. By faith, you bring these things. Because sometimes maybe you close your mind when you say, oh, you know, pala, nasa heavenly realm pala eh. Diba? Eh, hindi ko nga siya makikita sa buhay ko. Right? But listen, it's there but you have access to it. Everybody say, I have access. You have access to all of these things. Hebrews 11.1 1. 
It says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen." We talked about this last time, right? Just want to rehash this. But faith is what being fully convinced. It's being fully persuaded. It's being. It's you know that you know that you know, and no one can convince you otherwise. Even though your circumstance is showing you something different, but if you're believing, for example, of your healing, and you know your healing is here, even though your body is saying something else, believe and have faith that it's already done. Right? Your situation, your physical circumstance, should not have a vote in your life. That's faith. Everything that you're hoping for, everything that you are dreaming of, all the promises of God for you are in the unseen realm. It's not seen. The Bible didn't say it doesn't exist. It's different, right? Everything that you're expecting, hoping for in your life. It's not seen, but it's there. It's in the invisible. It's in the heavenly realm. It's in the spiritual realm. It's not seen, but that faith of yours—it's the substance, right? And it's the evidence. When you say evidence in a court case, if you have the evidence in a court case, you win, de ba? This is the same with your faith. This is the same with your spiritual law. If you have the evidence, the faith, you win all the time. Question is, do you have faith? Are you activating, stirring up that faith so that you can start moving things from the spiritual to the physical? Ephesians two eight nine it says, "For by, by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is the gift of God." I'm going to highlight these words: through faith. Through faith you have been saved. By the means of faith you have been saved. On account of your faith, because of your faith you have been saved. That's what through faith means, right? You receive God's grace of salvation through faith. And I like this, this word save right here, because a lot of times when we talk about salvation, we think of eternal life, right? That's one. When we talk about salvation, this word save is from the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O, which means forgiveness, healing, protection, deliverance, prosperity, victory. So by faith, right, you receive all so-so, right, S-O-Z-O, your prosperity, your protection, your deliverance, your healing, your victory, everything that comes in a package of salvation you receive because of faith, through faith, on account of your faith. Faith is what's going to bring what's available in the spiritual realm to your physical realm, right? That's what's going to bring it. Now we need to establish a few more foundations here today. Let's uh, look up John three six. Foundations, because again, we're talking about faith, and we have six weeks to talk about faith. But you need to understand the foundation, right? And the first one that I want to highlight here today is you are a spirit being in a flesh. Touch your body right now. And dito naman kayo, de ba? Yes, you have a physical body. You have a physical body, but listen, you are a spiritual being. That's your truth, right? John three six is that. Oh, can we go back? That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit. Capital S, right? The Holy Spirit. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Those who are born of the Holy Spirit is spirit. Small S. That's you. So if you are saved, if you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, then you are a spirit being. 
Number two, you are the only being, and listen to this, very, very important, you are the only being that can function from the spiritual realm and the physical realm. From the invisible realm and the natural realm. This is what makes you unique. This is what makes you special. God is a, spi- God is a spirit being, correct? How about the angels and demons? Are they physical beings? They're spiritual beings, correct? The plants and the animals are what? They are physical, right? The plants and the animals. But you, you're different. How are you different? You are both, right? You are God's masterpiece because you are both a spiritual being and a physical being. And you are the only species that could function from the spiritual and the physical. And why is this important to know? For you to access the spirit realm, you need to be a spiritual being. For you to access the physical realm, the world, you need to have a body, right? You need to have a physical body and you have both. For you to be legal here on earth, you need to have a physical body. And this is why Jesus had to come here on earth as a man. He needed a physical body to function legally here on earth so that he can do his purpose here on earth. And this is also the reasons, reason why demons, you know, demonic spirits and stuff, they wanna possess physical bodies in order to impact the world, right? This is how important our bodies here. This is what gives us legal access here on earth. But then it doesn't stop there, right? Because as I said, you have the body and you have spirit as well. And that's why, again, you are the only species that could access both. And because of that, you can bring things from the spirit to the physical. You can bring the kingdom here on earth, right? Because you have the access from the spirit and bring it to the physical. You know, this is so important that you understand this because God is counting on you to cooperate with him. We actually talk about this in more detail in lesson one of our Eight Foundations class, right? That's the salvation and the kingdom, but we talked about this in more detail, but this is part of our foundation. And by the way, it is resuming August 6th, face-to-face class, right? And then August 13th for our online classes. So please, if you haven't started studying the foundations, I would suggest that you do so. It'll give you a huge revelation, right? A lot of revelation, a lot of mind shifts, a lot of mind shifts. Okay, you know what? Let me share with you. Last Thursday, today's Sunday, okay, Thursday, this week, actually, Thursday morning, the Lord, I was half asleep, and the Lord woke me up with a message, and he said, the rules of the game has changed for you. And I was like, okay, okay. The rules of the game has changed for you. And it felt like it's not only a message directly to me, but I felt like God was was speaking to me and he wants to highlight this specific message to the church today. So church, the rules of the game has changed for you. Allow me to explain. Allow me to explain. Before you were saved, right? Before you were saved, you were only functioning from the physical. Can we show that the next slide again, please? Uh, the, the picture, there we go. Before you were saved, you were only functioning from here, from the physical, because what? Your spirit was dead, right? Your spirit was dead, so you were only accessing the physical, the natural realm. So you knew about hard work, you knew about toiling and sweating, right? You're familiar with that. So if something is not working in your finances, for example, all you need to do is work hard, Toil and sweat, right? When you do that, you somehow see results in your life. Because that's the world's way. Because that was your kingdom before. Now listen, when you got saved, can we show the slide for Colossians 1.13, please? 
When you got saved, this happened to you. In that moment of your salvation, it says, delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of the dear son. Let's show this slide again, the picture. So when you got saved, Colossians 1.13 was applied to you in that moment, right? All of a sudden, you were transferred, you were translated from the kingdom of the physical, of the world, to the kingdom of God. This is your new home now. The spiritual side, the invisible, the unseen realm, the heavenly realm is your new home now. You're not of the world anymore. So therefore, the rules of the game has changed for you. You can no longer apply the toiling and sweating and the hard work without faith. Let me give you an example. Consider the story of Peter. And that's in Matthew uh, chapter 17. And this was uh, the time when he needed money for temple taxes. Kailangan niya magbayad, right? Temple taxes is coming. Peter, you know what, listen. Peter probably, and this is my, from my imagination, right? In that specific instance, P- Peter was probably thinking, okay, what can I do? How can I pay the taxes, right? And maybe in his mind, he's already creating a checklist. And again, this is just for my imagination. Okay, a checklist of what? Okay, maybe I can go back to my fishing trade. He was a fisherman, right? I can go back to my fishing trade. Okay, let me create a checklist. I need uh, to secure boats. I need to prepare the nets. I need to recruit crew, my crew, right? I need cut to cut the baits. I need to gather all the supplies for my fishing. That's a good checklist, right? And then, after collecting all the supplies, what does he need to do? He needs to fish. It may be, a, I don't know who here has any experience of fishing. Wow, really? Wow, Danny, okay. <laughs> Let's go fishing. But listen, I mean, I don't know anything about fishing, but it could take two days, right? One day or two days to fish the right amount of fish to pay for the taxes. Right? And then what else? After fishing, what else do you need to do? Well, you need some time to sell the fish and get the cash, right? Now, all of those things, all of those activities, let me ask you, how much time do you think would Peter have taken to do all of those activities? How many days? Two days, three days, maybe even four days, right? I don't know how, how fast to fish and to sell the fish, right? But listen, I mean, that's how much earth time, how much earthly time it would take to accomplish something, right? And listen, for some of you, when a situation happens in your life, when something comes up in your life, a lot of times you go to that logical side and say, okay, okay, what can I do? And you start listing down the things that you can do logically, right? What you know, what are the solutions? What's the strategy? What can I do? Blah, 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 right? You list down the solutions right away. I'm not saying that's wrong. However, you have to realize that when you do and take that path, you're actually taking the earthly path. You're taking the natural path. You're taking the world's path. Right? But the true story, let me go back to Matthew chapter 17, is in this case, Peter took the case in the spirit realm. Right? Peter moved the situation, the circumstance of not knowing where to find money for taxes, right? From the physical to the spiritual realm. Okay, there we go. And then what did he do? He received specific instructions from Jesus, from the Lord, right? What was the instruction? Here we go. It says, nevertheless, lest we offend them. This was Jesus speaking, right? Go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Wow. That is a heavenly solution right there. That's a solution from the spirit realm right there because Peter chose to move, 
right? To move, to transfer the circumstance to the spiritual realm. And because of that, he received a supernatural result. Can we go back to that slide with the picture again? He received a supernatural result. Listen, who here wants to receive a supernatural result in their life? Who wants to see the supernatural in their circumstance? Of course. Then learn how to function from the spirit, not from the earth. Re, earthly realm, the physical realm. Understand how to function. And that's why, again, that's why we're having this six-week series because you need to hear, you need to understand, you need to gain the knowledge so that you can apply the wisdom in your circumstance. And I hope that's what you're learning right now. You know, how can I? I'm sure you have, I mean, I can't think of a person, as if you're an adult, right, who ha has no issue or challenge or circumstance. Sino dito yung walang issue sa buhay? Oy, di ba? Lahat naman tayo meron. Lahat tayo merong challenge. Now, while you're listening to the series, it's you looking for solutions and strategies, not from the world, but from God. Right? And while you listen and go through these series, it's you just communing with the Lord and say, okay, Lord, teach me, teach me. What do I need to learn? What do I need to do in order to manifest what's in the spirit realm to my physical life? I hope that's a good, that's a good goal for each and every one of you. Right? Because being translated, and we, we read Colossians 1.13, right? Being translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God is one thing because you have already been translated. It's a done deal. You were moved. You have a new home now, right? You are already a citizen of the kingdom. That's one. However, learning how to function from that new kingdom is another, right? Learning how to function from the spirit realm is another thing. Everybody say, I choose to function from the kingdom. Romans 10, 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You guys are very familiar with this, right? The faith that will move the resources from the spirit realm to the physical is the faith that is founded in the word of God. Because listen, you can have faith, but faith in something else, right? But what we're talking about here is faith that is founded in the word. That is what we're looking for. That is what Jesus is going to look for when he comes back. It's that faith that is founded in the word. Because let's face it, you hear, right? And then you believe. And no matter what, it, it is applicable to any circumstance. You hear, and then you believe. You hear music, you hear shows, you hear um, TV, Shows, movies, news, right? You hear these things, you hear conversations with people, and you hear it enough and you start believing them. Diba? When you expose your ears and eyes, when you expose yourselves to things around you enough, you will start believing these things. So you hear and then you believe. What you are believing now, right? may still mainly because of the things that you hear or you heard. You heard from other people that you hang out with, that you always hang out with, right? If you have a lot of negative friends, you're going to start becoming negative sooner or later. Real talk, right? I mean, how about authorities in your life? You hear enough of things from people that are above you how about celebrities? How about influencers? Okay, that's a new word. YouTube, vlogs, right? You listen to those things enough, you start believing those things. Now, I'm not saying they're all completely wrong, but what I'm saying is you got to be aware that that's what builds your belief system. Right? That's what builds your belief system. Now, I talked about people that you hang out with. Well, maybe some of you are asking, well, who do I hang out with then? Wala na akong ibang kaibigan. Paano ba yon? 
Hanap ka sa Wisdom Church. Go to, it's true, right? Look for friends inside the church, friends that you can talk about the word with, that you can walk faith, join wisdom groups, right? That you can have, um, that you can talk about faith, right? And someone who can stand in faith with you, right? Church is a good place to start. And you need to understand, if you have the faith of the world, you get the results of the world. If you have the faith founded in the word of God, then you get the results of the kingdom. It's simple. I know it's simple, but it's, it's not easy. Hosea 4, 6. And I know, I mean, is that my phone? Okay. It is my phone. Sorry, guys. Okay, sorry. Okay, Hosea 4, 6. I know Pastor Riz talked about this so many times, right? I just want to highlight this again. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I want to include that one line right there, right? My people are destroyed. My people, uh, Pastor Riz talked about this. It's not the world. It's, this is talking about you and I, right? And the word destroyed, if you look at the other versions of the Bible, it says they perish, so they're destroyed, they're pe they perish, they're doomed, they're cut off, they're ruined. These are all the words that were um, used in different versions of the Bible, right? For what? For lack of knowledge. And listen, I just want to highlight this. Because you have rejected knowledge, you have chosen to reject knowledge. So it's not like knowledge is not available to you. It's not like the Bible is not available to you, right? It's not like godly counsel is not available to you. It's not like lessons, podcasts, um, courses, teachings are not available to you. They are available, especially in our day and age right now. Everything is available, right? But listen, it says, because you have rejected, you have chosen to reject. You have chosen to not seek and keep on seeking the knowledge. That's what the Bible says. Isaiah 5.13, another one, it says, therefore my people, again, talking about his people, right? You and I, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Now, this is very interesting because again, it's talking about you and I and it says they've gone into captivity. They were carried away as prisoners. Right? Because of lack of knowledge again. And you know what's sad? It says here, honorable men are famished. Honorable, noble men. But because of lack of knowledge, no matter how honorable you are, you could be in captivity. Because of ignorance, you could be carried away as a prisoner. Can you believe that? I mean, this is serious stuff, church. Real talk. If something is not working in your life, in any aspect of your life, it is an area that, is, that you are ignorant of. If something is not working in any aspect of your life, it is an area that you are in ignorant of. You can't be a band-aid Christian anymore. What's a band-aid Christian? It's someone who only goes to the word when something is happening. When there's trouble, I need, to, I need to read the word, right? May problema, may challenge tayo. I need to read the word. When there's a problem, when there's trouble, that's the only time they go to church. That's the only time they talk to godly people, right? But then if there's no problem, there's no issue, happy, happy muna, you can go and deal with the world and just do the world stuff. You have to decide that you cannot be a band-aid Christian anymore. 
Now, if you're always sick, you're ignorant of the power in the word of God to heal. If you're always in lack, you're ignorant of the power in the word of God to give you provision and increase. If your life is full of strife and challenges in chaos, right, you're ignorant of the power in the word of God to give you peace and comfort. So what do you do then in your circumstance? Seek the word. Seek the word. Keep on seeking the word, right? Until you get the solutions to your situation. Ephesians 4.18, it says, their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is beclouded. They are alienated from the life of God with no share in it. This is because of the ignorance the want of knowledge and perception, the willful blindness that is deep-seated in them due to the hardness of their heart, right? To the insensitiveness of their moral nature. Now, this is so good, right? But I want to highlight this. They are alienated. This word alienated means non-participant. Non-participant, right? You are no longer a part a participant of the life of God if you are ignorant. If you're ignorant of the word, you cannot participate in the life of God, in the Zoe kind of life that God brings. You cannot participate. Because of ignorance, you're gonna be limited to accessing just the physical realm, even though you live in the kingdom. Right? Because of lack of knowledge, you are only limited to the natural things and get mediocre results. Who here wants to get the extraordinary results? Yes, the supernatural results. Yes, then function from the kingdom. And how do you function from the kingdom? Know the word, understand the word, get wisdom so that you can apply it in your life. Are you guys still with me? Church, ignorance is a choice. And getting knowledge is also a choice. And it's actually that makes it easy, but it's not, no, simple, but it's not easy, right? Because you're given a choice. And a lot of times it's easy not to do, right? It's easy not to read a word. For some reason, I I think it, I don't know if it's a Filipino culture, but for some reason we think that learning, right, studying, reading a book, or listening, learning is limited inside the walls of school and training facilities. I'm just observing. A lot of times when you're out of school, you stop reading books, you stop learning, you stop listening to things that will grow you, you stop those things, why? I mean, learning should be a lifestyle for us. And it's not limited to, yes, definitely main thing, the word of God, right? But if you are in business, then learn how to run a business, right? Whatever trade you're in, whatever industry you're in, it's a continuous learning. No, it's the same thing with the word of God. It's a continuous learning. It's a lifestyle. And it is your key to functioning. Right? Learning the word is the key to functioning from the spirit realm. From the spirit realm. So that you can bring resources from the spirit to your physical life. Can we show the next slide? Now we need to understand, right? Because I'm highlighting the word of God here. Yes, I know we're talking about faith, right? But listen, faith comes by... And hearing by the word of God. And that's why I'm highlighting, I'm pounding on the word because you need to get this. Right? You cannot say, I have faith if you don't have the word inside of you. You need to get the word. When you get the word, you build that faith. Stir up that faith. And the word of God is what? I have this arrow here from the spirit realm. It's what brings the resources from the spiritual to the physical. Right? It's from here to here. 
by the word of God, that's good. And the word of God also, right, is what is going to bridge you, right, to access the spirit realm so that you can function from the spirit realm, so that you can command things around you, so that you can reign in your life because now you're functioning from the spirit realm. And the word of God is the bridge. You cannot go to the spiritual realm without the word. It's your access. It's your bridge. Everybody say, I take my battle in the spirit. That's where you should function, right? And when you function from there, then you get the results of the kingdom. Are you guys still with me? Tahimik nyo? Hebrews 1.3. Let's go. He is, this is talking about Jesus, right? He is the sole expression of the glory of God, Jesus, right? The light being, the outraying of radiance of the divine, and he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature. Let's go, continue. Next slide, please. Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power, when he had, by offering himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down to at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. I want to highlight these words. It says, upholding, maintaining, guiding, propelling the universe by the power in the word. Church, everything that you see around you, everything that you see in your physical, right, they were created, they were maintained, they're being upheld, right, they, they are being propelled, they're being guided by the word of God. Everything. You look up in the sky and you see stars at night. You see a bunch of stars. How do you think those stars were created? By the word. And do you know why those stars don't come crashing down to your homes at night? Because of the word. And then you wake up in the morning and you see the sun shining. Do you know why the sun shines in the morning? The word. Do you know why? You have air to breathe every single day. The word, the word maintains, guides, upholds, propels everything in the universe. The word of God. Every seed bears the same kind because of the word. You have life because of the word. You get activated because of the word. This is how important the word of God is. And if you don't get the revelation of the power in the word of God, then you will not intentionally seek it. Right? You will not intentionally build the hunger for it. Did you know hunger is built? It's, it's not something that you cannot control. I just have to say that because we're talking about hunger for the word, but you can apply this in the physical with food, for example. Who here does um, low sugar, low carb stuff? Okay, well, I do, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes not. But let me, let me tell you, when you start training your body not to eat sugar, not to eat carbs, the first couple of days, your body will fight you, right? First couple of days. It'll fight you. However, after two days, three days, four days, you no longer crave for sweets. You no longer crave for carbs. In this begin, you have retrained your body because you can train hunger. Now, in this case, train yourself to be hungry with the word. You can. Initially, your soul will fight you. I like, I like the sharing of Sis Tanya kanina. It was just, nasira yung makeup ko Sis Tans. But, you know, it's just so good because she showed us the, the, the truth behind spirit, soul, and body. Right? 
You have, she calls it the Ate spirit. It's our higher self. It's the spirit inside of us. It's the spirit that connects to the Holy Spirit. That part of us has limitless potential. There's a part of you that has limitless potential. So you can't say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, mahirap yan, hindi ko yan kayang gawin. No, because you have that power inside of you. You have limitless potential. Now you just need to choose to tap into that. Right? Tap into that spirit. She tapped into her ate spirit. Right? And say, you know what? No, no, no. Soul, you're not in charge. Body, you're not in charge. Right? I, I remember uh, Psalm, Psalms 103. When David was, was worshiping the Lord and he was saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul. What was he saying? He was commanding his soul. He was commanding his body. Listen to me. You got to choose to bless the Lord, O my soul. And everything that is within me, bless his holy name, he said. You can do that. Soul, read the word. Soul, receive the word. Study the word. Have hunger for the word. You can command yourself to be hungry with the word and be intentional with learning the word. John 10.10. 10. And it says, The thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I came that they may have life, have and enjoy life, and have it in abundance. Okay, this is from Jesus, and you guys are very familiar with this verse, right? As Pastor Riz had mentioned today, what, what is the enemy stealing from you? The word, right? The enemy is not stealing your health. He's not stealing your family. He's not stealing your finances. He's too smart, I guess, to do that. He knows that all he needs to do is steal the word from your heart. And when he has stolen the word from your heart, then he can kill and destroy your life. Because he knows that if you are ignorant with the word, if you don't have the word inside of you, you stay in the physical realm. If you don't have the word inside of you, you won't be able to build up the faith and receive what God has for you. That's how much important the word is. And unfortunately, the enemy knows that. The question is, do we know this? Do we understand this? And of course, the heart of God is here. Jesus said, I came, right? That's one of his purposes. I came so that you may enjoy. So church, it's okay to enjoy your life, right? Remove the guilt. Enjoy life in accordance with the word, right? Enjoy life and have it in abundance until it overflows so that you can bless other people around you. I want to go back to Hebrews 1.3. It says again, he is the sole expression of the glory of God. Talking about Jesus, right? Can we go to the next slide, please? And continued, it says, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. This is talking about, again, the word of God, upholding, maintaining, propelling, right? Let's forget the universe for a minute. Forget the universe, because it says the universe, right? But let's just talk about you and I. About you, just you, right? You can say God's power in his word, right, upholds you, maintains you, guides you, and propels you. And I look up this word, and this propel really um, was highlighted to me. So I, I looked up this word propel right? Other words for this is drive, right? The word, the power in the word of God drives you. The power in the word of God pushes you, launches you, catapults you, moves you, forces you, impels you, accelerates you, energizes you. If you want to experience those things, then you need a word, right, to drive that. 
in your life. Now, I pray that today the Word of God will do all of those things in your life and more. Did you receive that today, church? Okay. Can I, can I ask everybody to stand up, please? Let me bless you. Thank you, Jesus. And I know while you're listening, maybe the Lord's reminding you of promises in your life already. Before I pray for everybody, with everybody's eyes closed and all heads bowed down, if you are here today and you feel like, I don't have a relationship with Jesus, and you want to have a relationship with Jesus, please raise your hand. I can pray for you, lead you to a prayer. Or if you're here today and you think, you know what? I need to go back. I want to renew my faith. I want, to, I want to renew my relationship with Jesus. If that's you with everybody's eyes closed and heads bowed down, can you please raise your hand? I'll guide you to a prayer. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if that's you, um, just follow my prayer. Say this after me. Father God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. And after three days, he rose again. Lord God, I receive your gift of salvation. I renew that in my life. I receive forgiveness for all of my sins, past, present, and future. I now walk in divine health. I decree and I declare, I now walk in protection and restoration. I now walk in abundance in every aspect of my life. Jesus, I thank you for coming into my life. And from this day forward, I declare that you are my Lord, you are my Savior. I dedicate and surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And for everybody here, let me pray for you. And right now, you know, maybe during our conversation and even right now with your eyes closed, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you a promise from the Lord. A promise from God or something, a solution, a strategy that you've been asking from Him. Think of those things right now. See yourself experiencing those things right now. See yourself seeing the solutions. See yourself experiencing the promise in your life right now. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the revelation. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the vision that you're giving to each and every one here today. Holy Spirit, thank you that right now as we see this vision in our mind's eye, that right now our faith is stirred up. Right now, Lord, we declare we are fully persuaded. We are fully convinced. Lord, we know that we know that we know that this promise in our mind, this promise in our heart is already here. It's already here in our lives. And so, Lord, right now, we claim that promise. By faith, we declare that this promise is here and now. This promise is part of our lives right now, Lord God, in the mind mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Right now, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this promise. We thank you for the manifestation of this promise in our physical life right now. Right now, oh Lord God, Lord, we declare, we choose to function from the spirit realm. We choose to believe the invisible. We choose to believe this vision that you're showing us even right now with our eyes closed. Lord, we choose to believe and we choose to come in agreement with with you with all of these visions with all of these promises Lord God Lord we choose to receive from you and only from you and Lord right now we just rebuke anything and everything that we have consciously or unconsciously 
received from the world that's not from you. That's not according to the purpose in our lives. It's not according to your dreams for us, for our lives. Every agreement that we have done, knowingly or unknowingly, we cancel those agreements now in Jesus' name. We cancel any agreements that we have with the world. Every vows that we have said to ourselves that's not from you, oh Lord God, we cancel those things right now in Jesus' name. We command them powerless, null, and void, and destroyed right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, we just openly receive, openly receive everything that you have in store for us, everything that you have in the spiritual realm to our physical lives right now, oh Lord. Activate those things to function, to show up in our lives. Activate your word in our hearts, Lord God, for us to have that faith to believe and see those things in our lives. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. We glorify you for today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. You know what? Let me pray for you real quick. Let me just release you. Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you for a great service. I just uh, talk to the, the seeds that have been planted in your heart right now. That those seeds will grow. And I protect them with the blood of Jesus. That those seeds that you have received today will grow 30, 60, 100 fold in your life, in your family. And right now, Lord, we thank you for a week of favor, a week of abundance, a week of ease, and a week of productivity for everyone here today. We praise your name, O oh Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. For more of Wisdom Church of Manila's preachings, you can visit our website at wisdomchurchofmanila.org.